Terraform and Pulumi are very popular infrastructure as code tools. In this video, we're going to show a demo to compare between the two. Hi, my name is Sam Gabriel, and let's get started. All right, so I have a code space uh, running here in GitHub, and the benefit of, of code spaces, it allows me to set up an environment for you so you can just spin up the code space and you have all the tools necessary. So if you wanna take a quick look behind the scenes, you can see here a dev container uh, specification, which is a, a JSON file, and I am uh, installing Pulumi, as you can see here, version 386, and I'm installing uh, Terraform version 1.5.5 and uh, the Terraform language server as well. All right, so that out of the way, let's go ahead and start with Terraform. What we'll do today is very simple. We're going to spin up an S3 bucket in AWS, once with Terraform and once with Pulumi. Let's get started with Terraform. So first thing you want to do is um, create your environment variables. The key is basically for uh, AWS to access AWS. So your AWS access key ID and secret uh, access key. I've already done this. So you would just change or add your uh, key ID and secret access here and then put it in that in your terminal. Once that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, Terraform folder. In Terraform folder, we've got a very simple main.tf file. And as you can see here, there's a Terraform Stanza with the required providers, AWS, and the version of uh, the AWS provider that we need. And uh, we're specifying US East 1 as our region. The AWS S3 bucket resource here, we're giving it a name, N0 Terraform example, and a few tags, name and environment. Uh, then we're specifying the bucket ownership for the objects here, and, it's, and the object is bucket owner preferred. Uh, that's the object ownership. And then finally, we want this to be a private uh, bucket. So you can see ACL is private down here. And with that, let's go ahead and run Terraform init. This will initialize our backend. We're using a local backend here. And we're going to run Terraform plan just to see a dry run of uh, the resources that we're going to spin up. As we can see, we got three resources to spin up. Nothing to change, nothing to destroy because we don't have anything to begin with, right? And here we've got the S3 bucket example and the ACL and the ownership controls. All right, so if we would like this, we're going to go ahead and run Terraform apply. Now what Terraform apply is going to do, it's going to run another Terraform plan just to make sure we're all good and give us a prompt here. If we're ready to commit, we're going to run, uh, we're going to type yes. That's going to go out and create our S3 bucket for us in AWS. And while that is running, you can see that we have a lock file. And this lock file is important because it now locks the version of the AWS provider that we're using to 5.19.0. Uh, we also have a state file, which is uh, very important to keep it secure. And uh, here you can see the resources that we've spun up in here. So this can contain uh, sensitive information. So it's important to make sure you know who has access to this state file. And of course, since this is a simple demo, we're running it locally, but you would want to have the state file stored somewhere secure, um, maybe an S3 bucket that is uh, encrypted or maybe N0 uh, that is another option. All right, so we've got all the resources here in our state file. We see that the app, the apply has completed successfully. We can quickly go to our AWS S3 console, make this a bit bigger, and let's refresh our buckets here. And there we go, it shows up here. N0 Terraform example. Uh, we can see under the properties tab that we've got our tags, environment dev, name, my N0 Terraform example bucket, right? So that looks great. And if we want to look at our permissions to see uh, we've got block all public access is on, meaning that this is a private bucket. And also our object ownership down here, uh, bucket owner preferred for object ownership. So that 
went very well and it was pretty straightforward. Now let's move on and start to work with Pulumi. So Pulumi gives us the ability to um, create a, uh, a kind of like a wizard, if you will. So what we'll do is we're going to create a directory. I already have one here, but I want to create this from, from the scratch so you can get to see how it all works. So let's say Pulumi test. All right. So we'll create this directory. Let's change directory to it. And then what we'll do is we'll run Pulumi new and uh, it's asking for me to create to have a token so I'm gonna go and generate a token um, through the Pulumi uh, SAS so this will take me here I can create a new token here I can actually delete my old token before I forget and let's go ahead and create a new token give it a description let's call this m0 demo uh, Pulumi, for example, just so I remember what this is about and create. And now once I have it, I'm going to copy this and don't worry, I'm going to delete this after the video. Uh, I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to paste that. What this effectively does, it gets me to log in to, uh, to Pulumi, to the Pulumi backend SAS. Now it's asking me what kind of template do I want to start with, which is quite nice actually. So I am a big fan of Python and since Pulumi allows me to uh, use whichever programming language I'm comfortable with, unlike Terraform where it's a domain specific language with HCL. So I'm going to use Python. So if I go down here and find AWS Python, I'm going to select that, give the project a name. Let's call it S3 demo Pulumi. A description let's call it let's give it a description saying an s3 bucket demo with Pulumi. Uh, created a new project and it's asking me to to call or give a name to the stack let's call this Pulumi s3 stack and uh, the region is us east one so i'm going to click enter for that and let's see, it's creating my virtual environment. Very nice. I like that. Whenever you're uh, programming with Python, you always want to have your own virtual environment. So it's creating that already for us, which is really neat. Okay, it looks like it's downloading dependencies here or installing dependencies. Very good. Um, so it's pretty much uh, done everything for me. Uh, your new project is ready to go. Uh, perform initial deployment, run Pulumi up. All right, so... If I ls in here, I see a bunch of files. Let's take a look and see what the files look like. So first off, I see a, pain, a main pi file. And in here, I can see we're importing Pulumi. Uh, from Pulumi AWS, importing S3. Very nice. Uh, it's actually creating a bucket for me as an example, which, which is cool. We're going to update this. But um, as a boilerplate uh, scaffolding example, that's pretty neat. And then export bucket name, bucket ID to, uh, to export that as output. Very cool. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got this Pulumi, uh, Pulumi S3 stack. So named it based on the project name dot YAML. Uh, here we got configuration is already configuring a region to US East one. That's what we gave it in the wizard. Uh, and then Pulumi YAML file. We've got another, uh, configuration file. I can see here S3 demo Pulumi runtime name is Python virtual environment VNV and S3 bucket demo with Pulumi is our description. And finally, requirements.txt file here, uh, just a typical Python requirements file. So you can see Pulumi, the Pulumi version, the Pulumi AWS version as well. So very, very cool. All this boilerplate stuff is, is neat. But now I want to uh, put in my actual main dot, uh, main dot pi file, which I've already created ahead of time. So we can speed up this process. And if I go back, I'm just going to go ahead and paste my code here. And uh, as, as you see here, we're doing the same thing, importing Pulumi, importing uh, S3 from Pulumi AWS. And I'm creating a bucket, giving the bucket a name and zero Pulumi example. Uh, ACL is private, right? And my tags environment is dev and my n0 Pulumi example bucket. These are the two tags, name and environment. 
And then the ownership, S3 bucket ownership controls. And uh, I'm referencing the bucket ID from over here. And then the rule object ownership, bucket owner preferred, and then an output as you can see. So that's great. Let's go ahead and run Pulumi up. What that's going to do, similar to Terraform apply, it's going to go ahead and show us what's going to happen. We're going to create S3 bucket and with ownership controls. Uh, if I want to see details, I can get, go ahead and take a look at some of the details. If I like what I like here, what I see here, I'm going to click yes. And this should take me to, uh, should start creating the bucket for me. All right. So this looks nice. It seems like it has already been created. If I go over to my bucket uh, and let's go back to buckets and refresh. I see Pulumi example got created. Very interesting. Uh, we can go in here and see our properties. And once again, environment dev, my M0 Pulumi example bucket is here. Permissions, uh, the block all public access is on, means it's a private uh, private bucket. And then we've got our ownership is bucket owner preferred for the object ownership. So everything looks great. So we were able to successfully spin up two buckets, one with Terraform, one with Pulumi. Seems great. All right, now what I wanted to do is show you something interesting that I found when I was uh, trying this before recording this video. And I'm gonna introduce Drift for both of these buckets, one for Terraform, one for Pulumi. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go into Terraform first. And what I'm gonna do is from the console, so outside of Terraform, I'm going to change the environment from dev to prod. Okay, save that change and uh, do the same thing for Pulumi. So we'll go into Pulumi and uh, go ahead to properties and go into the tag for environment. Let's change the value of environment to prod. Save that change. And now we're going to see if Terraform and Pulumi were able to detect the change. All right, so heading back to our code here and let's run I'm in the Terraform directory, so let's run Terraform plan. What this is going to do is gonna run Terraform refresh and uh, basically go out to the real world to AWS and figure out if anything, anything has changed and refresh and sync its internal state to, uh, to that. And it found that now there is a discrepancy because in my configuration, I want the environment to be dev, but it saw that it's prod, so its state file is prod but it needs it to be dev. So you can see that it's asking to make a change, one change here, the tag from prod to dev. So it was able to detect the drift. So let's go ahead and run Terraform apply. And yes, and when this is done, we'll go back to our bucket, to the Terraform bucket and properties. And we see that Terraform was successful in putting back my environment to dev based on what I declared in my configuration. So that's excellent. Now let's try this with Pulumi. So let's go to Pulumi. Let's clear this. And with Pulumi, you need to run Pulumi. You can do it multiple ways. Pulumi preview and refresh. That's one way. And notice it, it sees no change. See, three unchanged. So we try Pulumi, just refresh. And again, there is nothing changed, right? So even if I say, like, show me some details, really there's nothing that's, uh, that's changed. No resources will be modified. So that's a little bit disappointing when I saw that. Um, so I decided to take this a step further. And what I did is if I go in here to the Pulumi example and say, hey, I'm actually, let, let's go out and delete the entire bucket and see if that will trigger a change. So we need to just delete this here, delete it, delete the bucket. Okay, refresh. All right, the Pulumi bucket is gone. Uh, let's go back and run Pulumi refresh again. 
and now notice that it did it did see a change right so if I were um, yeah let's refresh it that's fine and if now I go ahead and run Pulumi Pulumi up I can also run Pulumi up refresh that's also an option instead of taking a two-step process now of course it sees that it wants to create two uh, resources here I'll say yes and this will go out and, and create my my bucket so it detected the change or detected the drift when I deleted the s3 bucket but didn't detect the change when I made a, a change to the to the tag which is uh, quite unfortunate I have to say so let's go back and just refresh this and we should be able to see our bucket came back volume is able to create it again um, and just going here and you can see it's it's back and now let's go ahead and clean up so we can do this pretty easily with both tools so we'll go in uh, terraform first and go ahead and run terraform destroy and you'll get a prompt asking you are you sure you want to destroy the infrastructure and we'll say yes and that's going to go out and delete the s3 bucket okay and uh, it'll give us a confirmation at the end perfect and now let's do the same with pulumi so now you can run pulumi destroy do the same thing gives you a prompt you say yes and this one deleted as well we can go back to our buckets here in AWS console, refresh, and they're both gone. So that's pretty much it. Uh, so basically, I mean, it's it's one of those things that might be a bug. Uh, I'll probably raise an issue with uh, with Pulumi to, to take a look at it. But, um, but this video hopefully kind of gave you a feel of Terraform and Pulumi. Uh, of course, Terraform has been around a lot longer than Pulumi. Uh, so from my perspective, I see Terraform as uh, some, you know, a tool that's been in the industry for a while. It's pretty tested, pretty well, uh, and, you know, used in the community, supports it quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to Pulumi, it's then kind of the newer kid on the block, if you will. Uh, I really like that you can use whatever programming language you, uh, you want. So it tailors to developers. Uh, they don't have to, you know, uh, learn HCL or a domain specific language, they can go ahead and use Python, TypeScript, Golang, whichever language they're comfortable with to spin up infrastructure uh, alongside their application, right? So it really empowers developers that way. So that's, that's kind of my take on it. Um, for me, the, the drift detection is important. So hopefully that gets resolved. But other than that, it really depends on the uh, the folks that are going to spin up infrastructure in your organization, whether they're uh, DevOps folks, platform engineering folks, or you're going to pass this on to developers. So depending on uh, who is going to use or who is going to spin up infrastructure in, in your organization, you might want to lean one way or another. Uh, but I'll leave this with you. If you take a look at env0, you don't have to make a decision with whether Terraform or uh, or Pulumi, you can take a look at N0, they support both. So you might have folks in your organization that might uh, lean towards Terraform and others towards Pulumi. So N0 is a platform or a framework agnostic platform that can enable both uh, teams in your organization. So do take a look at uh, N0 in that regard. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.